Hi there, my name is Luke Bryan. I'm a research success coach. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about Harry Potter. It should come as no surprise that I'm a pretty big fan of the Harry Potter universe, especially the books. And one of the most intriguing parts of the books, to me at least, is the Hogwarts school library. We see Harry, Ron and Hermione, especially Hermione, use the library a lot throughout the series, whether it's looking up Nicholas Flamel or doing legal research to save a hippogriff or just doing their homework. Whenever we're in the library with these three, I always kind of wonder what the library is like. We get an idea of the atmosphere and what's in the library from the books and the films and the games offer a few different perspectives of how it might be laid out and what it might actually physically look like. But more interesting to me is how do people know where to find what they're looking for? How do students and teachers know where to get what they want? And how do librarians know where to put stuff once it's been taken off the shelf? The core of these questions really is, how is the Hogwarts School Library organized? I mean, do they use Dewey? You're probably familiar with the Dewey Decimal Classification System. It's the one most widely used in the English speaking world where every item in a library's collection is assigned a number from 001 to 999.9999999 based on that item's subject or class and subsubject or subclass. So an example here is this book, uh, Australian Bird Names, A Complete Guide. It's been given the Dewey number 598.0994. Hope you can see that. I'll take you through this. 500 is the science section. So this is a book about science. 590s is zoology. So we know that it's a zoological book. And 598 is birds. And that's roughly how Dewey works. It takes an item, looks at what it's about, and then assigns a number based on that. The 0 0.0994 adds an extra layer of specificity. Not all books have the 0 0.0994. Some have different decimal points. Some don't have any decimal points. Um, in this case, 0 0.0994 means Australia. So we can look at this call number, this Dewey number, and go, well, we know that that's a book about Australian birds. Done. So if we were to apply the Dewey Decimal System, or DDC, to the Hogwarts School Library, what would it look like? Well, much like this book, the Element Encyclopedia of Vampires, every item in the Hogwarts School Library would start with 1-3. So in this case, we've got 1-3-3. Three, three. And this is because in Dewey, the occult is given the range 130 to 139. And pretty much everything at the Hogwarts School Library is about the occult. It's all about magic. So using Dewey to organize the Hogwarts School Library, not gonna be useful. They have 10,000 books. If you've got every single book starting with the same two characters, one, three, it's unusable. So no, we won't be using Dewey to organize the Hogwarts School Library. We won't be using any muggle created system, I don't think, not Library of Congress, not Matus, not BSAC, because they are all too mundane. What I think the Hogwarts School Library and the library at the Ministry of Magic, because there has to be a library at the Ministry of Magic, right? I think both of these libraries use the same system, which we're going to tentatively call the British Wizarding Library Classification System. And today we're gonna to see if we can build that system. Just a bit of a massive caveat before we start. While I'm a librarian, I'm not a cataloging librarian. So this is gonna be an interesting experiment. I don't know if it's gonna work and I don't even know if my methods are gonna be good. Let me know in the comments if you are a cataloging librarian and if I have massively messed this up. I'd be really interested in hearing from someone who has experience in this field. Anyway, now as with Dewey, most library classification systems organize their collections by subject or class. So we're gonna start with a list of Hogwarts subjects. We know from the books and the films that first year Hogwarts students are required to take Transfiguration, Charms, 
potions, history of magic, defense against the dark arts, astronomy, and herbology. Flying is also part of the first year syllabus, but we only ever see one lesson. So let, let's add it anyway. And now we're going to add the electives introduced in years three through seven. Arithmancy, muggle studies, divination, study of ancient runes, and care of magical creatures. Hermione famously takes all the subjects in book number three, leading to hilarious time travel hijinks. JK Rowling also states that there might be some extra subjects taught if there's enough demand, such as alchemy and apparition, which we actually do see in book number six. Then there's all the extracurricular activities listed on the Harry Potter wiki, which pulls references and mentions from the books, the games, and the films. Advanced Arithmancy Studies, Ancient Studies, Art, Frog Choir, Ghoul Studies, Magical Theory, Muggle Art, Music, Muggle Music, Orchestra. Xylomancy is also mentioned on the wiki, but that's a branch of divination that uses twigs. Get it? It's a branch of divination that uses twigs. It's taught at Ilvermorning, the North American school, and not at Hogwarts. So we're going to put it in with the rest of divination. Which brings us to the next step in this process, simplifying this big long list of subjects into something slightly more manageable. Now, as with xylomancy fitting into divination, a lot of these subjects will fit into each other or into another larger unnamed class. So for example, care of magical creatures and ghoul studies would probably go into a class called magical creatures. This is also where we'd find information about dragons, hippogriffs, blast-ended scroots, and also, unfortunately, more sentient and humanoid creatures like merpeople, centaurs, giants, house elves, and probably goblins, because wizards are kind of terrible. I created a spreadsheet to do this, and I'll link to that in the description. I also had to look a few things up to find out what they were exactly, because some of these are kind of obscure. Did you know that Arithmancy is Hermione's favorite subject, but it's basically just divination, which is Hermione's least favorite subjects, plus math. Anyway, here is our simplified list of subjects. Alchemy, art and music, defense against the dark arts, divination, games, sports and physical activities, languages, magical creatures, muggle studies, natural magic, potions, thaumaturgy, the wizarding world. From 25 down to 12. Now that's a pretty good start, but not perfect. It's just a good start. Thaumaturgy is the working of miracles or doing magic. And I borrowed that one a little bit from Terry Pratchett's Discworld series. Thaumaturgy includes charms, transfigurations, as well as magical theory. Now I really struggled with two of these subjects, alchemy and defense against the dark arts. Alchemy because we just don't know a lot about it in the wizarding world, whether it would fit into one of the other classes. I thought about putting it in potions, but I decided to make it its own class. Defense Against the Dark Arts is an interesting one because it's such a multidisciplinary field. Um, it pulls information from almost every other subject. So it belongs in its own class as well. But I can definitely see a reason for both alchemy and Defense Against the Dark Arts to be moved into other classes. Now we need some way of identifying each of these subject headings that's easy and concise. We could just take the subject headings themselves and use that, but that's not particularly concise. It's not going to fit onto a spine label. We could also just take the first letter of the subject heading. The problem with that is that we'll then have double ups, which will be confusing and not easy. What I think we might do is borrow from Library of Congress's classification system and use letters to represent different classes. But not English letters or Roman letters. We're going to use Greek letters because it wouldn't be a Harry Potter wizarding thing without some reference to the ancient Greeks. Now, I'm not going to create a hierarchy with this and I'm not going to make each subject flow sort of naturally into another like in Dewey. That's more work and more refinement than I'm wanting to do right now. So let's go down our new list of classes and assign each one a Greek letter. Alchemy gets Alpha, Art and Music gets Beta, Defense Against the Dark 
Arts gets Gamma, Divination gets Delta, Games, Sports and Physical Activities gets Epsilon, Languages gets Zeta, Magical Creatures gets Ada, Natural Magic gets Iota, Potions gets Kappa, Thaumaturgy gets a Lambda, and The Wizarding World gets Mu. Now we're only using half the Greek alphabet at this stage, which gives us lots of room to expand if we need to at a later date. And we could just leave it at that and then organize each book within each class alphabetically so that Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander would come under Ada S. And that would work. Except that the Hogwarts School Library is quite large. It does have quite a number of books and I think it would be good to have more refinement. We don't know how many S's there might be in that section. So we need to add more detail, much like in Dewey. We could divide each class into 100 subclasses and giving them a number, just like Dewey does. Or we could use maybe the English alphabet to divide each class into 26 subclasses. Using numbers would give us 1200 total possible subclasses or using the alphabet gives us 312 possible subclasses. I'm kind of leaning towards using the alphabet because it makes about as much sense as anything else in the wizarding world, especially the money. And we don't have enough information about each subject taught at Hogwarts to really go into much further detail here, but we do know a bit about some subjects like divination. We know that Hogwarts students in divination take astrology, cartomancy, crystal gazing, dream interpretation, palmistry, tessimancy, as well as general divination theory. Now there are more, I'm sure, but this will do for a start. And what we can do now with these divination subjects is much like what we did with the major classes, assign them a letter. General divination gets A, astrology gets B, cartomancy gets C, D for crystal gazing, dream interpretation gets E, palmistry F, and tessimancy G. So if we wanted to find a copy of Unfogging the Future by Cassandra Vablansky, we would start looking in the Delta section for divination, and then we would look under A because it's a general textbook that covers all the subjects. And then let's go with V for Vablansky. So Delta, A, V, and we should find Cassandra Vablansky's book. And I think we're done. We're going to leave it there. It's been an interesting exercise and I think we've made a really good start into sort of thinking about how the Hogwarts School Library would be organized and how we'd classify books within that. It's far from perfect and I think there's definitely a lot of room for improvement and I'd love to know what you think could be improved. In a future video, we're going to talk about how the Hogwarts staff and students find what they need without memorizing this whole system. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm going to be posting new videos semi-regularly. Thank you so much for watching.